I've been looking forward to making this video for weeks now. It is finally time for yet another Halloween makeup tutorial, and obviously I've chosen to recreate the modern day Cruella. The best part about this DIY Halloween costume is that besides the wig, all of the products that I use to create this look, I either already owned or they're going to serve a purpose far beyond Halloween. So we're gonna get straight into the makeup, but first, if you're new here, hi, my name is Miranda, or Cruella. Welcome to my channel where we talk all things budget beauty. If that sounds interesting to you, then become the newest member of the Slashed Squad by hitting subscribe and the bell icon. I've already done my foundation and concealer. I may need to touch it up later after we've done the eyeshadow if there's any fallout. So I am going to be starting with the brows. Now I have some reference photos here and throughout the movie, her brows aren't super shapely. There is a slight arch to them, but they're not incredibly defined. They do have sort of a fluffy boy brow look. So for this, I'm just gonna be using a brow powder. This is a duo from Ulta Beauty's own makeup brand, and I have the shade Espresso. I believe this is the darkest shade they have. And I'll be taking the darker of the two shades in that compact and brush that through. She also doesn't have a lot of gradient to her brows. It's really just pretty solid all the way through. So up here where I would typically really define my arch and give it a nice curve, I'm really just gonna keep that pretty soft. I'm just filling in the sparse areas, brushing it through. And at the front, I'm not gonna go all that much lighter, but I'm also not gonna really square it off all that much. And we're gonna be coming back to this area once we start the eyeshadow as well. And the point here is that there will be no harsh lines. Everything is super, soft and blended and blurry. Let's move on to the main focus of this look, which is of course the eye makeup. So modern day Cruella sports a very dramatic smoky eye. It's almost a graphic smoky eye. I have some screenshots that I took from the movie where you could see the eye makeup a little bit more clearly because Emma Stone herself has slightly hooded eyes. So it was kind of hard to see the makeup in like the movie posters and some of the stills from the movie. But here you can see her eyes are downcast and a lot of that black smokiness is really concentrated on the outer corner. And then we have a white or silver lid going on. So I'll be starting the eyes with a classic drugstore makeup product. This is the NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil. Has it been a while since you've seen one of these on YouTube? <laughs> but this is still such a great eye base product when you want your shadow to stick and you want the shades to look rich. So I'm gonna be applying this all over the lid area as well as flaring it out a bit because our shadow is going to come out pretty much to meet the tail of the brow. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pretty much slap it on in that shape, right about there. And then I'll blend it out with my fingers. You kind of want to thin it out without shearing it out too much. This is a little harder with nails on. <laughs> Let me get a brush. There we go. And I'm gonna bring this up under the brow as well. For the eyeshadow, I'm gonna be using one of the best smoky eye palettes at the drugstore. This is the CoverGirl True Naked Smoky Palette. I feel like this has just the perfect grouping of shades to really create this look or any other cool toned smoky look. So first I'm dipping in to this matte white shade and that's gonna be going all over the lid. This will help set our base as well as make it easier to blend the other shades later. So I'm just passing Adding that in everywhere, all the way up to the brow bone. You can see that NYX pencil did already start to crease just a tad, but no big. You can just work that out with the brush and it'll smooth out. And next we're gonna go straight into working with the black shadow for that super dramatic outer corner. So as you can see in this palette, we do have this middle shade, which is a matte black. And I'm going in with a tapered blending brush. And I want to really build this out. I wanna start small and then blend it outward. Cause it's so much easier to do that than go overboard on our first go around and have to clean things up. Especially with black, it's pretty hard to do that. So I'm gonna start by just tapping this in my outermost corner, pretty much stopping at my crease. Now with more of a flat eyeshadow brush, this is the e.l.f. blending brush, which contrary to its name, 
looks a lot more like a normal eyeshadow brush because it is flatter, it's just a little fluffy. This is actually perfect for what we wanna do. So I'm dipping into that same black and I'm gonna start kind of carving out that shape. It's gonna look pretty light at first. We can always darken it up later. Just wanna get the shape down. So I have this photo over here, I'm referencing it. The point of her outer corner does actually meet the tail of her brow. So that's as high as I'm gonna go with this. Keeping it super light to start. And then we're gonna move this black toward the crease. And that's really shearing out to more of a gray in the inner area. We're really keeping that black on the outskirts. And as a reference for like the shape of this crease, going from the inside out, it's almost starting like touching the bottom of your brow sloping up, sloping down, sloping up towards the tail. That's the general shape you want this crease to be. I'm taking a smaller, densely packed eyeshadow brush that will really help us apply as much product as possible. And I'm just gonna go over that outermost portion and bring that up into that point and bring it in. Now, once you get to about this middle point, you will wanna start kind of blending it out, shearing it out. You don't want it to be solid black all the way in. So I'm just bringing that extra layer about up to there. I'm also bringing this black down onto the lower lash line just to kind of connect everything. And here's the thing, I mean, as with most smoky eyes, it's gonna look a little whack before it looks right. <laughs> Don't worry about this part in the process. It's all about building it up. Going in with that smaller blending brush, I'm going to gently blend over the edges here and really start to smoke out that shape. And as we work on this, if you have to go back in and add a little bit more black to deepen it up, go for it. It's going to be a little bit of back and forth, but we really want this to be softer on the edges and more rich toward the center. The other thing is that throughout the movie, her makeup gets like <laughs> more and more chaotic the more she sinks into this identity of Cruella. So if yours isn't like perfect glam style and it is looking a little more messy, Perfect, fine. <laughs> That's kind of why this is such a great option for all skill levels because it really does not have to be perfect, clean, and technically correct. Now using this matte gray shade in the palette, she has sort of a shadow cast under her brow that almost extends it towards the bridge of her nose. So sort of starting where your crease ends here, like I mentioned, it sort of meets the brow. I'm gonna take that down into the bridge of the nose. So you're really kind of working it in that little pinch of the nose. Now hers does extend upward and connect with the brow. So I'm just moving the shadow lightly. So it ends up looking like the front of the brow it sort of just comes down this way. So now I'm bringing this up to connect with the front of the brow. This is really creating that kind of cartoony, villainous brow look. So one last thing I wanna do before moving on to the white contrast on the lid, looking at my reference photo, the black outer corner is sort of rounded out toward the lid and mine is looking a lot more angular, like right here. So I'm just gonna go in with a makeup remover and sort of carve out a round shape on the lid. You could totally do this cut crease style, but this works for me. <laughs> you can also do this with um, a little bit of micellar water on a brush. So I'm just gonna go about there and I'll fill in the blank with a little bit more of that NYX jumbo eye pencil. I'm just painting it onto the brush and carving that out a little bit. And then I'll just blend that inward. Okay, now that that's carved out, let's move on to the shimmery white in this palette. This is gonna be going on the brow bone and the lid. We are just filling in those areas that are open, basically, all the way to the point. And we will also be using this shade all over the lid where there's no black shadow. 
all the way up to that curve and into the inner corner. Now the cool thing about this eyeshadow palette is that these shimmers actually work really well if you want to apply them wet for a little bit more of an intense shimmery effect. So I'm just gonna do it to show you a little bit of a glam version of this look. Just using my NYX Matte Finish Setting Spray, I'm gonna spray my brush, dip in, to the shade and start painting that on. And you can see right away, we have more of that like metallic look. It almost turns it into like a cream shadow texture. So I might go even just right up against the brow with this a little bit to even it out. The eyeshadow is done. Let's finish up with the liner and lashes. So looking at Cruella, she does have a little bit of winged liner going on. It's not super noticeable though because of the black eyeshadow. It's a little bit like a kitten flick. So I'll be using the NYX Epic Ink Liner for the first time. Y'all have recommended this product to me so much. I finally went and picked it up. I am gonna start out really thin on the inner corner here and then just bring that out. Oh wow, this liner is smooth. Oh my gosh, it's like dispensing the perfect amount of liner and incredibly precise. All right, when it comes to the actual wing, this is not gonna come out too far, just about there. And just bringing that in. Wow, y'all were not lying. This liner rocks. It is so precise and sharp. Okay, so that is where I'm at. I'm not gonna build on it. That's exactly where I wanna be. So let's just get it exactly the same on the other eye. Now this is a testament to how good this liner is. I cannot believe how easy this liner is to use. Am I crazy or did I get this exactly even on both sides? New favorite liner. I'm just gonna say it. I'm gonna tight line my upper water line really quickly with the Koki Velvet Smooth Eyeliner in Deepest Black. I'm so excited because I just found out my local grocery store, which is a Kroger store, so Ralph's, Smith's, Kroger, they now carry Koki in store. So, so excited because sometimes my Sally Beauty, like it's hit or miss whether or not I can find them as well as Walmart or the selection is really small. They had like a whole wall. This has become one of my favorite liner collections because they have such beautiful shades, but the black is beautiful and creamy and rich. So it's great for either smoking it out or tight lining. Prepping my natural lashes for fake lashes. Just gonna go ahead and give them a curl and I'll lightly coat my lashes with the CoverGirl Lash Blast Clean Mascara. I am using pretty dramatic lashes, but don't worry, they're not expensive. They are, of course, my all-time favorite AOA Studio 3D Foam Ink Lashes. These are the style Yoni. The main thing you wanna look for are fluffy lashes or just thick lashes that flare out at the corner because we're really trying to keep this exaggerated wing shape. But these are only 155 on Shop Miss A. Part of the proceeds goes towards animal charities and they're actually really great quality. I can get like, four-ish uses out of these and I do not take care of my lashes. <laughs> I just don't have the patience to be cleaning up the glue and everything. I'll also be using the AOA Studio Lash Glue. And as you apply the lashes, you just wanna be really mindful that that flare is lining up with the true corner of your eye, really maximizing the shape. If it's too far inward, you're gonna lose that flare a little bit. Cruella de Vil, she's gonna get those pumping. <laughs> That's not how it goes. <laughs> I love how this is going out. <laughs> that was my uh, excited makeup sound. <laughs> All right, the last thing we gotta do in the eye area is add her little beauty mark. So it is on her right side, just under the eye on the top of the cheekbone. So this is gonna be done with the same liquid eyeliner and it's just about, wait, do I have a natural one like in the same area? Ooh, mine is a little bit farther back, but I feel like I should put it over mine so that it doesn't look like I have two. Yeah, you can totally still see that straight on, so I'm happy with that. Now, I do want to lightly contour my nose, and this is definitely not something you have to do, but uh, just to kind of get that pinched look, I am gonna go back into that gray that I used in the inner corner of my eye, and I'm going to sort of extend that lightly downward. 
a little bit on the bottom of the tip to sort of snoot it upward. <laughs> now I'm certainly not a nose contour uh, expert. I very rarely, if ever, do it on myself. So a lot of this is just kind of blending it out with my finger, but we've pretty much gotten the uh, effect that I'm going for, for sure. Moving on to the rest of the face makeup. Now, Cruella doesn't actually have a lot going on on the face besides some contouring. The face in general is pretty powdery, matte, and pale. Now, just to point this out as well, Emma Stone in general is a pretty fair-skinned woman. However, there are scenes in the movie and in like the poster art where it looks almost like she has some sort of white face paint on. I did decide not to go that route, but in order to sort of maintain this almost just black and white face appearance, I will also be contouring my face with the gray shadow, just like I just did with my nose. Now I'll be using a fan brush for this, so that way I can really get into this uh, <laughs> pan shape. Dabbing it into that gray eyeshadow, and so we're adding that shadow without adding warmth. That's sort of the point here. And I'm trying to contour pretty high on my cheek to maintain that angular look. And we want the blend pretty soft as well so that it doesn't look like we just have dirty cheeks. <laughs> just gonna leave that one there. All there's left to do now on the face is the lips and Cruella wears this iconic red lip and it's again very angular. In order to get this really clean outline, I will be lining my lips first. This is again from Koki. It is their retractable lip liner in true red. This is a waterproof lip liner, so great for all night wear. So the best way to get a nice angular Cupid's bow is to create an X where your top lip dips. So starting at the top here, down like that, and down like that. Okay, I'm pretty happy with how that dips. And now the peak of her lip is just as sharp. So I'm gonna start at the peak and just bring it down in a straight line. And now, we can build out the rest of the lip. And these lips are not super overdrawn. You wanna keep the rest of the line pretty true to your natural lip line. We're not exaggerating any of the curves. So there we are. I'm just gonna keep the lips outlined. I am going in to fill the rest with a lip crayon. This is the Maybelline Superstay Ink Crayon in Own Your Empire. Beautiful blue-based red. Again, keeping all of the shades within this makeup look cool toned. Plus, blue-based reds tend to be more universally flattering and make your teeth look whiter. So just gonna go ahead and fill in the rest and just go straight up to the line and fill in the empty gaps. Now, if you want, you could also do the lining portion with this product. It does come with a pencil sharpener so you can really get that tip tapered. I just find that it dulls so quickly that you're gonna end up having to sharpen it multiple times throughout the application process. So using a lip liner is just a little quicker, especially since these two match so well. Now this is not necessarily a super long wearing lip product. It's not as long as say a liquid lipstick. I just find it a lot more comfortable, but especially if you're going to be wearing a mask for a portion of Halloween, or you just really don't wanna worry about it through eating and drinking, then in that case, I would recommend the Maybelline Superstay Matte Ink Liquid Lipstick in the shade Pioneer, I believe, is the blue-based red in that line. That won't budge. I am officially done with my Cruella Halloween makeup, but we know that it's not Cruella without the hair. The easiest way to get Cruella hair is with a wig. I promise you, the spray-in color is just not worth it. I absolutely hate that stuff. But luckily, Amazon has so many Cruella wigs, it was actually hard to decide which one I wanted. I ended up with a duo Cruella a wig and necklace, which is a replication of one that she wears in the movie. This was under $25. So I'm just gonna put the wig cap on first. Okay, so I've just got like a lunch lady vibe going on here. I'll tuck this behind my ears. And the wig also has fasteners to really tighten it up and back. So honestly, pretty good wig for the price. Hard part for me is like tucking my hair up into it. <laughs> Okay, I think I need to like do this off camera. I'll be right back. 
And here we are, the completed Cruella look. And this is just a regular black pleather jacket from Levi's that I bought on Amazon. It's something that I'm definitely gonna be wearing all fall and winter long, but Cruella basically lives in a leather jacket this entire movie. It's a little bit fancier, but this still gives the full effect. I love putting together Halloween costumes using regular clothes because then I'm gonna get way more use out of it. It's not something that I'm buying for one night and will never use again. What do you plan on being for Halloween this year, tell me in the comments below. And if you recreate this look, be sure to tag me on social media so I can see. Today's shout out goes to Jamie. Thanks for being a member of the Slashed Squad. And join me over in this video next where I show you how to create DIY Halloween nail stickers using a Cricut machine. I'll see you over there. Bye.